How's it going everybody? My name's Eric and in this video we're going to replace the carburetor on this Arians 17.5 horsepower gear drive ride on lawnmower, riding mower, tractor mower, whatever you want to call it. If you have this model or something similar to this, this video should be very very helpful for replacing your carburetor. And we're gonna go over everything in this video, step-by-step -step diagnostic. The part was about 20 bucks off of Amazon. I will have a link to it in the description and it fits so many different models of these lawnmowers in America. And hopefully by the end of this video, it's going to help you replace the carburetor if need be in your ride-on mower. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before we get into it, if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing so you don't miss another project. And if you have any questions or comments, throw them in the comment section. I'm sure somebody else or myself would love to be able to help. And let's get into the tutorial. The problem is the lawnmower won't start. The blades are off, mower's in neutral, the battery is good because I've already changed it and our switch works. So I press down the clutch, we turn the mower, that's all we get. We don't get anything other than that. We're gonna open our hood. You wanna make sure you got some gas. You wanna make sure it's kind of fresh gas too. And I filled this up yesterday, so I know this is fresh. We wanna make sure that we have spark. So you're gonna need a 5 8 wrench, also 16 millimeter. You're gonna come over here to the upper right part of the engine, take off this boot. There is our spark plug. We're going to get our socket in there, lefty loosey, open our. Once you loosen it, you can unthread it by hand. And then once it's unthreaded, we're going to reconnect it to the boot, and then you're going to want to ground the spark plug by having it touch something. And now we're going to start it, except for now we're going to look at the spark plug and see if we see spark. As you can see, sparks are flying, so we're getting spark. Now we got to see if we're getting gas. But before we do that, we're going to reinstall the spark plug. So we're going to take that spark plug, pop it out of the boot. We're going to thread it. In the spark plug hole down here, you can't see it because it's too dark. We're gonna thread it in by hand. You start threading it in by hand because you do not want to strip that aluminum. You want to make sure that you get it in nice and snug by hand. Then you're gonna come by with your socket and do the finishing quarter turn and then put your boot back on. There we go. So we know it's not spark. Now we're going to check for gas. We're going to pull off this clip right here and there's a little nub protrusion on the bottom of this clip and these two on the top we're going to clip down with pliers and pull that towards us a couple inches. We're going to pull this off. We should get gas flow if we have gas going to the carburetor. I'm gonna cover it up and now I'm gonna let go and see if we have gas flow. Okay, we have gas flow. That is flowing out very, very strongly. If you aren't getting gas flow from here, you're gonna wanna check this gas line, you're gonna wanna check your fuel filter, you're gonna check the second gas line, and you're gonna wanna check to see if there's a clog in your gas tank. Apparently, parts of your gas cap could break off in there, clog the little hole to where your gas flows out of. Maybe debris got in your tank. Depends what has gone through your mower. But since we know ours has to be past the carburetor, I'm going to clamp off the fuel line with some vice grips, set it up there. When it's above the tank, it doesn't allow any gas flow. When it's clamped, it definitely doesn't allow any gas flow. So we did both. Now we're gonna have to get off this carburetor. In order to do that, we're gonna take off this air filter, which is just two of these hand screws right there and pull that off. Just pull on that air filter, get that air filter off. Now we're gonna have to get off this engine cover. Two bolts in the front, a bolt over here, another bolt back here to lift off that engine cover, and then that's gonna give us a lot more room to work with. To get those four bolts off, it's a 3 8 inch wrench, socket wrench, crescent wrench. You could even use an adjustable spanner. If yours are the same, that's what mine are. Maybe three-eighths or 10 millimeter. A 
thought I was just gonna be able to lift it off, but there's actually another screw right there. Little tiny flathead screw, so if, don't forget to take that out. There we go. And for reference, the, the front bolts on this model are the shorter ones. The back bolts were a little bit longer. Take your time with those. They're kind of hard to get to, at least the back ones. Front ones you could use a, uh, a socket with and get them off pretty fast. And then this looks like it's just gonna be able to lift off. There we go. Gonna do some finagling for that. So now we're gonna be taking off the carburetor and it looks like we just unplug this from the bottom, take off a bolt here, a bolt on the back, that gets off this part and then the carburetor should be able to slide off. It looks like it's just bolted on to this uh, plastic tubing right here. And these two bolts, one here and one on the other side that you really can't see. There you go, you can see it. Those are 11 millimeter, very easy. And you're gonna have to get it off with a socket because this back one is kind of harder to reach with a wrench and you just get it on like that, break it, and then you can twist those twist those guys off. Once those bolts are off, you can lift off this piece and just push it to the side, dangle it. That gives us a good look at our junked up carburetor uh, bolted on. We gotta get these bolts off now. If you had a crescent that was the right size, that'd be fine. I don't think I have one that small, so we're just going to be careful not to strip our threads go one turn at a time, and it's gonna pull the carburetor off of this piece of plastic right here. And then the back one, a little bit more difficult, but you can kind of do it the same way. You get the idea. Lefty Lucy to get these. It's like a nut bolt. I'm, I'm gripping the nut, but I'm turning like an entire bolt. Again, not too difficult to get out, just gotta take your time. And then the gasket fell off in between the carburetor and here. You could reuse this if you don't have another one. I think I'm gonna probably use the one that came in my kit. But now the carburetor's just floating here. We're gonna have to get this out. So we're gonna finagle these little hooks accordingly and get them off. It's really gonna be hard to do this holding the camera. This linkage right here is going underneath and it's to the second hole, or the, it's to the inner hole. There's two holes here, one on the outside and it's on the inner hole. Nothing's hooked up to this hole right here. And this is just placed in a little channel up here. So when you push this all the way forward to grab it, it's also the choke, which pushes this lever into that pushes that, which closes that valve, choking it. So that's how that lever works. And simultaneously, uh, that one I think moves a little bit also. The linkage is the thick silver one going in, just poking into the top, and then there's a little spring underneath. We're gonna take off the spring one first, so all I did was pull a little bit, and then pull on that and it came off. Hopefully put that to the side. You don't want that to have to come off down here and then have to rehook it. And have to get these two bolts out to get those off. Man, this is so hard to do one-handed. Once the carburetor is free floating, it's a lot easier to get off the other linkages. I can just kind of pull on that one. That releases that, which gives us enough free movement to pull off the last linkage. So there is our carburetor out, the old one. This part was about 20 bucks off of Amazon. I will have a link to it in the description and it fits so many different models of these lawnmowers in America. If you got a new gasket in your kit, you can place that on there. Don't forget to sandwich it in between that and the carburetor. We're gonna do this one first. So just angling up the carburetor, it's already on. What I did to do is angle the carburetor and then we're gonna do this one. You just push, I'm pushing the carburetor down a little bit, moving, moving the little thing that flaps. Just 
just getting it into the, the right angle. There we go. It just has to get into the right angle. And then it kind of goes in pretty smoothly. And then this little spring thing. Oh, and there goes my camera. So I just had to finagle the carburetor, different angles, moving it. I couldn't film it with one hand. Um, that one went on very easily. The top one on very easily. And then I did the spring one last. I went this one first. Then we went with the top one. Then we did the spring one by itself. It was pretty easy to just kind of pull and push in. Hand threaded those in. Don't forget your gasket in between. We're going to thread these in as far as we can by hand. And then we'll hit them with the wrench to tighten it down. So we tightened those down pretty much until you can't tighten them anymore. There's like uh, three or four millimeters maybe of bolt left and they went pretty tight. Everything looks nice and flush. We're gonna grab this guy right here, place him back on and then don't forget to connect. There's like a little breather hose that popped off of mine, may or may not have popped off of yours. So don't forget to connect this guy to right here. Once that's on, you had these two nuts, those go on. And this back one, you gotta tighten with a socket, 11 millimeter. We could throw our air filter on here for testing purposes. We could hook up our gas line for testing purposes. Don't forget to connect this down here in the solenoid. I'm gonna reconnect this gas hose. We're gonna do this for testing purposes. That way we don't have to, don't have to take off a bunch of stuff if we need to make tweaks or if we forgot to do something. So we're gonna push on this gas hose. Get that over the nipple. Now gas should be flowing to the carburetor. All right, new carburetor is in. Let's fire it up. At least it runs. It's running a little rough. We'll see if we can dial that in tomorrow. It's late. People are trying to sleep. We'll work on it tomorrow. It's the next day. We're allowed to make some noise now. Don't forget, you gotta press this down while turning the key. You wanna be in neutral. You gotta be sitting on the seat to uh, activate that switch. And then you're gonna turn that over. <laughs> It may sputter, it may die. Maybe turn up your throttle a little bit. Uh, there are two adjustment screws on this. This is your air fuel adjustment. This is your idler adjustment. That idler one, once the, the motor's been running for about five minutes, turn up the idle by turning it clockwise, turn down the idle by turning it counterclockwise. I can drive it around, works great. We're gonna put the covers back on. Those are pretty easy. Just do the opposite of what you did, take them off. To get the top cover back on, you're gonna have to feed it over that. You're gonna have to push that piece of metal in and you wanna make sure you get the spark plug poured in between where the two bolts go. You gotta take your air filter off to sit it back on. And then all four of the bolts should line up. You're gonna to wanna to screw in front bolts by hand. Make sure all the bolts are threaded before you tighten them down. And then don't forget one little screw that goes right here. Once those four bolts are in, gonna reconnect your air filter, grab your little top cover, screw those down by hand. And just like that, our carburetor is reinstalled. She's jumping the car over there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel, subscribe so you don't miss another project. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye.